gets angry with us sometimes. He doesn't really like sometimes the choices that we make in life. And as we go through life, he sometimes looks down on us and, and says things like, you're a stiff-necked people. And the reason that he says that is because we don't listen to him. And we don't follow him. And we don't um, trust him enough that the way that he outlines for us in his covenants and in his dreams for our life including what he did for us when Jesus Christ is enough. And so we like to supplement it with other things. And then as we go through it, we like to look back on our life and say, well, it's not really my fault. And as we've gone through the series, we've looked at the very beginning of playing the blame game, Adam and Eve in the garden. And at the very beginning, the evil one tempted them and they pointed their finger at the serpent. They pointed their finger at each other. They pointed their finger and they played the blame game. And what God was really wanting from them was not the blame game. He was wanting them to just take responsibility for the actions of their life and be in relationship with him. The second week, we looked at the life of Solomon. And we looked at um, his plan for each one of us and the dreams that he had for Solomon's life. It was clear as we did the message and as you read the book of Proverbs that God's hand was on Solomon's life in an incredible way because no human being ever could have written the book of Proverbs. But in the midst of Solomon's writings, at some point, he started doing the opposite of what God taught him in his own life, and he quit repenting. And in the midst of that, started doing things that were disobedient to God, including even building temples to false gods, and got way off track and missed out on the blessing that God had set aside specifically for Solomon. He still was faithful to Solomon, still gave him a portion, but he missed out on many of the blessings that are really what God has in store for us because he was disobedient. And as we continue on in the series this morning, um, we could almost do an entire teaching series on the story of the 40 years of the Israelites in the desert all by itself. We could probably spend four weeks on this, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to spend one day on it. And so I'm going to take you through a journey this morning of Moses, the Israelites, and God's plan. And in the midst of the journey that we go on, I want to ask you to do something that may be a little bit different that we don't typically do in, in our services. As we go through it and we go through the story, we're going to take a few minutes to make this message this morning a prayer. And as we come across a passage, we're going to ask ourselves, are we like the Israelites? And we're going to ask for repentance for some of the very same things that the Israelites should have asked repentance for. And one way or the other, they either asked repentance or God showed them that they needed to repent so that he could continue to lead them and guide them to the promised land. There's a lot in common um, for us this morning. Because God's dream ultimately for each one of us is to lead us where? To the promised land. And as we go through the story of the Israelites this morning, I think it's going to be um, very revealing to each one of us that we are a lot like the stiff necked people that God talked to in the Word of God in Exodus. And I want you to open your Bibles this morning with me. And we're going to look at a few verses together, starting in Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. And Mark, this was a verse that was up in the worship set, if you want to skip up there and grab it for me. Um, Exodus 14, verse 14, I want us to read it together. Are you ready? The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. This is one of the promises that God gave to Moses. Another one is down here in Exodus 14, 25. Let's read it together boldly because it's the word of God. Are you ready? And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. So God gave a promise. And what's the second part? Promise fulfilled, right? So as you think about the story, let's just put it in a quick nutshell. The Israelites were in bondage and in slavery to the Egyptians. It wasn't a pretty sight. Um, as they went through it, basically they were... They were a workforce for the Egyptian government. They were doing, they were the pawns in the game of the Egyptian monarchy, and in the, in the midst of all of it, they were being beaten, 
Children were being taken away from them. Food rations would be taken away from them if they didn't work hard enough. And it was a difficult road. And the the Israelites were crying out for freedom. They wanted freedom from the bondage of the Israelites. In the midst of it, the Bible teaches us that as they cried out to God, what always happens in the Bible when you cry out to God? God hears your cry. And God responded by sending Moses and calling him and setting him apart and raising him up and preparing him. And do you realize that his preparation in Pharaoh's courts, how long did his preparation last? Does anybody know? Before he ran off into the desert, how long was his preparation in Pharaoh's courts? 40 years. 40 years. Then God sends him out into the desert. And you know how long he was out in the desert being prepared to set God's people free? 40 more years. That'd be 80 years. And as I think about the promise of God in be- beginning the story, a lot of us, we don't realize that. Why in the world was Moses out in the desert for 40 years? So that he could be prepared and equipped by God to live and to lead the people for how many years in the desert? For 40 years. So we're talking about a 120-year journey of getting it right with God. When we go back to the first verse, it says the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Here's the first thing that we need to repent of this morning. Often we can't even wait 24 hours for God. We overstep our band and we say, God, come on, do it. He doesn't do it, so you know what we do? Ah, we'll figure it out ourselves. And in the midst of it, we're missing out on the blessings that God has for us because sometimes he wants you to go through a molding and a training process so that he can prepare you for a bigger picture that you know nothing about. And sometimes we overstep our boundaries with God and we do exactly the opposite of what we know he's taught us to do because we think that we can move the process forward better than God can move the process forward. But the blessing that we learn from Exodus is the Lord will fight for you. You don't have to fight for yourself. You need to what? Only be still. Then he shows us that he'll fulfill the promise because the Egyptians, the cloud of God was moving along. They get to the Red Sea. The Egyptians are starting to freak out by all the things that are happening. And the Egyptians in the midst of all this start saying, let's get away from the Israelites because the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. You know what happens when we follow the decrees and the promises of God? People recognize God. You know what happens when we overstep our boundaries and do it with our own hands? People recognize you. And I want us to take a couple minutes this morning, right in the middle of the message, towards the beginning, to shut up and to be still. And I want to invite everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want you to take a couple minutes this morning to think about your life, the direction that you're headed right now, the events, the things that have transpired over the past days, weeks, months, the cry of your heart for what you'd like God to see do in your life right now. And I want us to all stop for a couple minutes and reflect on that And be honest with ourselves. And maybe there's an area in your life this morning that you need to repent of just walking forward without the love of God, without the strength of God, without the power of God, without the healing of God. And just ask for forgiveness and repent because that's when repentance becomes beautiful.